I was cutting queen palms, the pieces that hold their dates. I would strip the dates off them and cut them and I put them all in this large structure. You're looking at a piece that is 35 feet wide. It's hanging and it has about 90,000 of those pieces of the reed. Wow. Not of reed, of the um, date palms. And road, it's because to me this is one inch equals 80 feet and it's a scale version of when the Bush administration was allowing them to build roads and we're letting them cut old growth forests. Here's an article about that from the LA Times. It reads, opponents of the new rules fear that they will open the door to increase logging and drilling in the national forest. That's something that the Republican Party would have us doing right now. So the scale of this to me represented a giant storage system for old growth trees. As you're cutting down our forest, our national forest to make paper or just to clear roads so that they can do mining and drilling and you know exploring for fossil fuels as they rape our environment they're going to be cutting down the trees this would be a big storage system for the trees they're cutting down and here's a detail very detailed view of it that is absolutely awesome and where did you put exhibited this I exhibit this at a I had a solo show at a very beautiful gallery in downtown Los Angeles titled dangerous curve and I showed this in 2005 this piece took over a year to build but multi years collecting the dates other pieces that I did with the date palms include let's see do I sign that I made I don't think it'll show up very well on your film but this is a almost five foot diameter piece that weighs uh, about a quarter of a ton. And this has over probably 50,000 pieces of the date palm. Here's a close up view, a bit of a detailed view of it. And these are the other parts that I had cut off those date palms when I was making road. And this piece is very important and it's titled growth. And of course it's back to that universal peace sign the image that I believe anybody anywhere in the world can look at and know that it represents peace. Uh, the most recent lecture I gave was at the Jewish Home for the Aging uh, in, the, in Reseda, but basically I give lectures f at universities all the way down to literally I've given lectures at elementary schools. I lecture to people old, young, all around the world Oh. of all different age group to inspire. I lecture to artists and to groups that have nothing to do with art. Again, trying to express my political views. Yes. And then in this whole set here, for instance, is a, <laughs> a light box that I built uh, for a show. I had an L2 Contemporary, which uh, no longer exists, but it was an important gallery on Hill Street in Chinatown. Looking out onto Hill Street, it had a window. So I put this five foot high image. Uh, it was a light box lit from inside and it's questioning whether Dick Cheney would run for president in 2008. People were wondering if this was the campaign headquarters for Cheney 2008. I've done many sculptures taking on um, Dick Cheney. I consider him to be one of the greatest threats to freedom and democracy. And I believe that Dick Cheney has done more damage to the middle class in what he perpetuated through Halliburton and through deregulation and through the way he's under his, the Bush Cheney administration, the way they made it so that they could do fracking without it being under the uh, regulation of the Clean Water Act are just many examples of why Dick Cheney is the devil. He's a very, very dangerous man. So I was confronting that. And did I? Interesting. Maybe I didn't put Condoleezza in here. That's interesting. Queen Condoleezza didn't make... And then, well, I'm going to talk about one other piece here. This is a, a sculpture I did titled Asterisk, where for two years I cut up some old um, orchards that I had in the back of my property that were protecting some fruit trees. The fruit trees were getting too big. I took apart and the old wood that I have, I cut it down into the shape of coffins and then I would cross cut it into individual coffins each night based on the casualty reports of U.S. troops in Iraq. So from 2005 to 2000, 
actually from 2004 to 2006 or seven, yeah, right around there, every night I would come home, I'd listen to the news, find out how many troops, US troops had died in Iraq, and that's how many coffins I would cut. And I wow. kept filling the boxes. And I was living uh, alone at the time where I had, I had turned my living room kind of into a workspace and I was allowing the sawdust to build up everywhere and allowing that as the boxes filled, you would see more and more. So people who came to visit me would see the sawdust building up everywhere and that I'd been cutting more and more. The huge boards were cut down into each individual coffin and the boxes were filling up. So there's 250 coffins in every box right there. So this is when uh, the total of them were uh, at about 1,500 plus troops had died and I continued doing that with more and more coffins to where we went over 2,000 troops and then I actually had to quit. I was getting too upset. Yes. It was totally traumatizing me. I bet. So I quit that but that's again my examining. There's a close-up view of the coffins themselves. I wow. showed you that earlier. Wow. But each individual coffin. I'm getting uh, goosebumps just seeing this and then I showed that in a group show and I'll never forget the reaction of in particular an artist who really means a lot to me uh, Joel Otterson I walked up to him and I saw he was crying standing looking at my piece and I realized that that's what yes. I was trying I guess to reach out to hit your nerves to hit whatever whether you laugh you cry yes. what makes you want to joyous or scream I'm trying to get people to reach into their gut and their heart and react to their emotions and realize that they can change society if they're willing to raise one voice to get other voices to join in and protest. Yes. So. But it seems like, uh, I don't know, this generation just, I guess they, they don't, they don't want to know about uh, news. They don't watch news. A lot of them. It's too they depressing. Don't. I think that they don't want to. And right. I, and, and I'm somebody who has dealt with, you know, Juliana, part of me has, uh, like, I've published books of poetry, and in one of them I have just one page, one word, and it said escapist. And that is that part of me, right now I'm being, I'm in a phase where I'm being one, part of me wants to be an escapist yes. and escape from the horrible reality. Yes. Now, in reality, part of how I did it was that I chose to not become a father. I realized that I didn't want to have children in today's society, uh -huh. that I couldn't feel right bringing a kid in with the way that society is going, that I didn't feel that I was ready to and would be the right person. I be, believe I'd be a good father, but I'm so against so much of society and angered by the news and the media that I felt that I was too hostile, so I didn't want to have children. But my brother and his having kids, I see that an example, and with my friends who've had kids, and through watching people come through our university, they don't want to deal with the news and the reality. It's too depressing. You, They don't know, they, they're afraid. Personally, can they get a job? Can their parents get a new job? A lot of them, their parents are unemployed. And in today's world, how do you feel that you're going to be able to make a difference? It's overwhelming. And unless you might be getting personal money because you're part of the Walmart family or the Koch brothers, <laughs> you feel that you're not going to benefit from Citizens United, the decision by the Supreme Court yeah. saying that a corporation has a voice and has the right to express themselves and donate money. So the common average person, I think, feels weak and I personally feel weak and like my, I have less of a voice in 2014 than in all these years of the other work I'm showing you. I'm stunted in my growth right now. I can't, I listen to public radio for about 15 minutes. And it's enough. And I've, I've got to turn it off. I'm disgusted. Yes, yes. I, I, I had the same thing. I, I, for years, I, I did not watch TV, didn't listen to radio because I was so upset. And then I started again, and I am also very upset. But now, I think uh, I, I think that artists uh, have the responsibility now to open up eyes. 
And I think the word you just used is really important, and that is the word responsibility. I don't believe that our public or private schools necessarily are teaching as when I grew up in elementary school, we were being led by, we were reading about and learning about current civic people like Martin Luther King and even Malcolm X, but Martin Luther King and the Kennedys and Robert Kennedy and people who were raising issues for civil rights and for equality and to get people to raise a voice against the Vietnam War and capitalism, that the, I don't think kids are educated that way and that they feel a sense of responsibility and that they need to make a difference you're right. or that perhaps they even can make a difference. Yes, yes, you're right, you're absolutely right. So what can we do? I mean, that, that's the only thing that maybe older, older artists like us have the responsibility to go out and, 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 and unite and 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 uh, and teach the children and that's why i try to give lectures i try to make art that's portable that's one of the things about putting art into my vehicles and doing art that I can take out. I'm not restricted by, did somebody come to a gallery or museum to see a show I have? If I can get something out to the masses and reach them that way, right. then I feel I can grab a larger audience and raise social awareness. And that's really what I believe the power and the privilege that I'm yes. given as an artist. Yes. And being able to do an interview like this. It's fantastic. Can reach. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.